in Christ's resurrection, we see the transformational power of love and find hope for life in all this fullness and without end.
Hello everyone, I'm Matthew. I'm the lead pastor here at Cedar Ridge and happy Easter to everyone. So glad that you've joined us this morning. Uh, here we are on Zoom together. We can see one another's faces and uh, we can interact a little bit. Please do feel free to use the chat feature. Um, and we're especially glad if you are joining us for the first time or maybe you've just started um, checking in with Cedar Ridge. We're really glad you're here. You're very welcome. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So um, if you want to let us know that you're here, just uh, you can um, uh, drop us a line in the chat or you can go onto our website, click on the top right corner where it says contact and you can fill out our online contact form uh, or just email us or text us at uh, uh, connect at crcc.org. We'd really love to hear from you. Um, again, we're all together today. So all ages, um, everyone is welcome. Uh, and we've got lots of different things we're going to do to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And to start us off this morning, Devon and Aidan are going to lead us in a responsive prayer. So over to them. Jesus is alive. We celebrate and give thanks. For the wonder of our world. Thank, Thank you, God. God. For the beauty of spring. Thank, Thank you, God. God. For our friends and families. Thank you, God, for your amazing love. Thank you, God, for the gift of life. Thank you, God, and for making life out of death. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus. Thank you, God, for the way Jesus lived and the way that he died. And lived again and lived in us. Thank you, God. Happy Easter, Cedar Ridge. This morning, some of our younger Cedar Ridge kids would like to share with you the Easter story in their own words. Enjoy. Can you tell me about Easter? I forgot. What happens at Easter? Why do we celebrate? Jesus is alive! Jesus is alive! that he was going to be king of their city, but he was going to be king of our hearts. I think I remember when Jesus being caught by those soldiers. Were there some people who didn't like Jesus? There were some people, but there were some people who didn't like him. Yeah, what did they do to him? They made him bleed. Mm -hmm. Anything else? They wanted to kill him. Yeah. The crowd wanted to kill him, mm -hmm. but the but Pilate didn't mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. But Pilate didn't. Pilate? But Pilate didn't want to kill him. He was the because he because yes. Are you the king? He said, yes, I'm the king, but not of this world. Mm -hmm. Is there, oh, what's that? On the cross. Oh, what happened on the cross? Mm -hmm. Jesus died on the cross. Oh. I mean, I mean, they took the cross, put nails on him. They put nails on him, put him on the cross. And after Jesus died, he came back to life. He did. They put his body where? Into a tomb. Mm -hmm. And how did they, what did they do to the door? Close the door. Yeah. I remember after three days later, later after um, Jesus went into the tomb, um, he was alive. The soldiers accident fall down to the ground when they saw the angel. And then the angel kicked them and then they fell right to the ground. What did the angel say? He said he said that Jesus is not here. And then and then Jesus was there. Hooray! 
Jesus is alive! Good morning and happy Easter. It's so great to be here with you all this morning. Our younger friends did such a wonderful job of telling the Easter story, didn't they? Might not have been 100% accurate, but it was definitely 100% adorable. Let's give them a round of applause. We're going to read parts of that story now from the Bible. Last week, you might remember, was Palm Sunday when we celebrated Jesus riding into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey. And all the people waved branches like flags and cheered for Jesus. But the religious leaders didn't like that. They were jealous of Jesus and had him arrested, beaten and killed. Two days ago on Good Friday, we remembered this sad, sad part of the story. How Jesus died on a wooden cross on the hillside outside of Jerusalem. Jesus' friends were heartbroken. Life must have seemed very dark and empty without Jesus being there anymore. Let's listen while Ezra reads to us what happened next. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes. But they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Thanks, Ezra. Jesus' body was taken down and put in a dark cave called a tomb and sealed shut. His friends wanted to put spices on Jesus' body and say goodbye in their traditional way, but they weren't allowed to do that until after the Sabbath day. Instead, they had to stay home and wait. They waited Friday night and all day Saturday and all through Saturday night. They waited and waited, feeling very sad and empty on the inside, and also feeling anxious, afraid that if they went outside, something bad could happen to them too. But then, something strange happened. Let's listen. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning, stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the stripes of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. 
touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything to eat here? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his names to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Perhaps this year it's not so hard to feel like Jesus' friends staying home and waiting, filled with anxiety and grief. Maybe we've felt some of that recently. Maybe we're even feeling some of that now. And then these stories started, these strange stories, confusing stories. Some people said that men dressed in white had told them Jesus wasn't dead anymore. Other people said they'd met Jesus and talked to him, but they hadn't recognized him at first. And yet other friends said, well, that's just nonsense. It can't be true. It's impossible. We saw him die. Then they too went to the tomb and found it empty, but they didn't know what it all meant. This morning, our church is empty. It's Easter Sunday, but there are no cars in the lot. No one is making coffee or serving donuts. The stage is deserted. The chairs in the auditorium are all empty. There's no life in our building right now. Looking at these scenes, perhaps it looks disconcerting to you. Jesus' friends initially found the empty tomb disconcerting. It wasn't what they expected. But the empty tomb was not the end of the story. Jesus' body was gone from the tomb, but Jesus himself was out in the world, meeting with people in their homes and their workplaces, walking with them along the road, eating with them. Jesus was and is alive. Our church building is empty this morning, but the good news of Jesus is alive and well. We carry Christ into the world. We bring the life and the love of Jesus to our homes and workplaces, to our friends and neighbours. As Rory just read to us, we are witnesses to what it means to know forgiveness, to repent, to rethink life and live a whole new way. Jesus could not be contained in a tomb made of rock and he can't be contained in our church buildings. Jesus is alive and on the loose in and through us. Let's celebrate that this morning as we sing together. stars they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him Death, where is your sting? Our resurrection. 
Galactic King has rendered you defeated. Forever he is glorified. Forever he is lifted high. Forever he is risen. He is alive. He is alive. The ground began to shake. The stones rolled away. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? King has rendered you defeated. Forever he is glorified. Forever he is lifted high. Forever he is risen. He is alive. He is alive. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the land is overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the land is overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, for Hello again, everyone. Thanks again for joining us this morning to celebrate Easter together. Um, Easter is that time of year where we remember the death of Jesus and we celebrate the resurrection. And you may wonder, why do we do this every year? Why do we have to come back to this each year as part of our religious calendar? And you know, maybe it's because we forget. I, I kind of doubt that. Maybe it's because uh, we need to persuade ourselves um, every year that it really happened, that it's really true. You know, that, that, that might be the case. Um, but I, I think more importantly than any of those, really, is that we, we um, come back to the reality of the resurrection every year because we want to reorientate, recalibrate, recenter our lives around that reality. We want to live as though resurrection is real, as though resurrection is true. It doesn't matter what we believe. It doesn't matter uh, what we remember. Um, are we living in the truth of that, in the reality of that? And um, Easter helps us come back and recenter, um, and we do that at least every year. Um, we've been looking recently, in the last few weeks, at the um, Gospel of John and the meaning of Jesus in the Gospel of John. And we've looked at the I am statements of Jesus, statements like one we're going to look at today, which is, I am the resurrection and the life. And we've seen through those statements that Jesus is the embodiment of the divine mystery. Um, and that divine mystery is present in all of creation. It's not some abstract, airy-fairy, out-of-reach uh, thing. It's, it's very real and tangible. It's, it's, it imbues all of creation, all matter, all energy in space and time. And it's epitomized, that divine reality, that divine mystery is epitomized in Jesus. Jesus knew his identity. He centered his whole life around the, the identity of being one who is one with God and, and bears the divine essence. But Jesus tells us the same about ourselves, that just as he's the son of God, we are children of God. And uh, we're products of God, if you like, and we too bear that divine mystery. We too can recenter around that reality. It's just that we struggle with it more. Whereas Jesus seems to have mastered it and, and centered his life around that reality, we kind of struggle. But following Jesus means 
uh, it helps us recalibrate, it helps us recenter. So that's what we've been doing over the past few weeks. Um, so let's look at this passage where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. It occurs in John chapter 11 at a time when a friend of Jesus is, Lazarus, has died. And Jesus, the story goes that Jesus brings Lazarus back to life. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it's a wonderful story. It's also a very sad story because there's lots of loss and grief in the story. Jesus himself weeps and G um, Lazarus's sisters, Martha and Mary, are especially sad. And it kind of, I think, reminds us of the tension we feel about death, the fear we have of death and the grief and loss we experience in death. Um, and in the middle of all this, Jesus has a, an interesting, um, more than interesting, interaction with one of Lazarus's sisters called Martha. So let's read that now. It begins in chapter, 20, chapter 11, and we'll read verse, from verse 21. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. So here Jesus is saying far more than I'm going to bring Lazarus back to life. I mean, Lazarus was resuscitated and came back to life and uh, presumably died again. Um, and, and Jesus is saying though something, as in all these things, way more profound. He's saying, I am the resurrection. I am the life. In other words, this identity that I bear cannot die. Um, it's eternal. Uh, this divine mystery um, that fills my, um, my um, atoms and molecules and cells, which will die. Um, it, it, my, my identity transcends that. And therefore, your identity as a child of God transcends that. Um, and we can share in that resurrection. We can share in that life. Now, Jesus says to, um, to Martha, do you believe this? And that word believe um, could mean, you know, do you believe in the facts? Um, but it's, it, it's a word that's, um, it's pisteo in the Greek. And it's a word that means more, belie um, more than belief, trust. Do you trust this? In other words, I think what Jesus is saying is, when I say I'm the resurrection and the life, do you trust me, Martha? And Jesus, I think, will be saying that to us now. Do you trust me with what I'm, I'm telling you about your identity, about my identity? Do you trust what I'm telling you about this way of life? And in the, in the, um, in the Gospel of John, we see the disciples slowly trusting Jesus. You know, there's times when people leave and desert Jesus because his teaching is too challenging. And, and some of his closest followers say to him, you know, we've nowhere else to go because you have the words of eternal life. They're, they're trusting that. He's, he's, he's true, he's real, he's honest. And um, so, you know, what does it mean to trust Jesus in resurrection, in being resurrection, in being the life? And uh, perhaps rather than trying to work it all out, work all the details, what really happened? Is it really true that, that, that this, you know, did Jesus walk out of the tomb? Was Jesus levitated out of the tomb? How did it all happen? Rather than worrying about what we should believe in regarding that, um, perhaps the challenge of Easter is, can we trust Jesus? Will we trust Jesus? And what are the implications of trusting Jesus? Trusting Jesus with all that he's taught us, the way that he's shown us. Um, and I, I just want to share four implications um, this morning. Normally we share three, don't we? But it's a bonus for Easter. But um, the first one is this, that um, we need not fear death. Uh, you know, if we trust what Jesus is saying, if we trust that he's the resurrection and the life, it doesn't mean we know what happens when we die. It doesn't mean that we have it all worked out, but we, we trust him and don't need to fear. Here's what Jesus said about death um, in chapter 14 of John's Gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. In other words, I think what Jesus is saying there is not, oh, you know, um, the afterlife is a place with houses and, and rooms in it. Um, I think he's, talk, he's saying that metaphorically, but rather that, um, that his life transcends this life. Um, his life transcends death, and our life can too. As we trust Jesus, 
we realize that our life can be with him. So as he, as he crosses the threshold of death, that means that we can thrush, cr- cross the threshold of death and still be one with Jesus, still be one with God. And so we don't have to be afraid. Now that's not to say that grief and loss and the pain of death are not really hard. That's not to trivialize that in any way. And we see that in the story with Jesus when he raises Lazarus. There's a lot of pain there, a lot of, um, a lot of grief at the loss of Lazarus. Lazarus. Um, but it means that we can trust God for the outcomes and, and trust Jesus. Um, it also means that death is a new way of life. So if we trust Jesus with our lives and with resurrection, then we can um, trust Jesus that letting go of, of the things that hold our identity back, that, um, that distract us and perhaps tempt us away from um, understanding and realizing that our true identity is that we're children of God. You know, we get we get sort of pushed around by uh, the forces in the world that uh, uh, um, tell us we have to comply, that we have to compete, that we have to be better, that we have to prove ourselves. Um, if we trust Jesus, we can trust that actually letting go of those things is the way to life. Here's, here's what Jesus says in chapter 12. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. Those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Um, that I don't think Jesus is saying this world, this world and this life doesn't matter. In fact, Jesus says, I've come to give you life to the full, to, to, to experience this beautiful life that we're given. Um, but it's, but we're, we're not to be uh, distracted by it or, or, or absorbed by it so that we, we lose sight of our, ter- our eternal identity. It, it means that if we trust Jesus, we will, we will um, learn to love like Jesus, and love is the greatest force in the universe. Um, I think of resurrection like this. Um, Jesus had so much life to give away. Jesus embodies life like nobody ever has done. And Jesus gives that life away sacrificially because of love. Um, Jesus doesn't retaliate. Jesus doesn't fight back. Jesus doesn't um, uh, avenge um, hit the people who, who attack him. And because of that, he dies. But because of that, giving up that life, Jesus ex- exhibits more love than has ever been um, exhibited before. And that love is incredibly powerful. And that love, this is the way I see it, is what brings Jesus back to life. It's the power of the resurrection, if you like. And so Jesus is saying it's okay to make sacrifices because sacrifice is always um, inherent in love. If we're going to love, we're always going to have to make sacrifices. Again, Jesus puts it this way in John's Gospel. Um, but as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may, may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus is saying, look, that's the epitome of love. So we can, we can make those sacrifices, we can keep on loving um, and not giving up on love because we trust Jesus. We're trusting that this way of Jesus is real. He is the resurrection and the, and the life. It transcends whatever kind of a deathly experience we, we have as a result of sacrifices we, we make, whether it leads to our death or not. It kind of feels like a loss, feels like a death when we make those sacrifices. But for the sake of love, it's worth it. And that leads on to the final point that we, we, we never need to give up hope because of that reality. Even in the darkest of situations, whether that's a, a dark situation in our own lives, a dark situation in the lives of uh, people we love or maybe just the darkness we see in the world where things feel hopeless, where feel, thing, things feel like death. Um, we need never give up hope because love can always bring things back to life. We never need give up on the way of love. We can always remain hopeful, um, even in those dark situations. Again, here's what Jesus says. Very truly, I say to you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. He's kind of metaphorically and prophetically talking about his own death there. But I think that's that's a way of life for us where we're not going to fear death, fear darkness in this life, because out of death comes life. The life of Jesus, the life of the divine mystery transcends death. It transcends all the darkness. And that's why we can be hopeful. So um, as we think about Easter, let's let's take up the challenge to trust Jesus 
Jesus, I think, is someone we've learned over the years to trust. And as we trust him as the resurrection as, and, and the life, let's recalibrate and recenter our, our lives around that, um, that reality as we celebrate it together now. And specifically, we're going to celebrate that reality right now through communion. So Johans and Courtney are going to lead us in that. We take communion to remember Jesus, not just that he was, but that he is. Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus is the life. Jesus is with us now. Christ is in us and we in Christ. As we consume the sacraments of bread and wine, we consume the eternal, living, divine presence that is Christ. As we eat the bread, we enjoy a meal with one who loves us completely. We remember that nothing can separate us from the love of God expressed in Jesus. The wine represents the blood of Christ. Love always means sacrifice. Love, Jesus, never stops loving us. As we drink, we too are empowered to reach out to our world with love, the same power that brought Jesus back to life. Voice of mercy, breath of God, life from life sustaining us, earth below and skies above, beautiful redemption song. Melodies like morning rise. Darkness leaning toward the dawn Into our sorrow sings the light Beautiful redemption song Hallelujah, love is come Hallelujah, God with us Hope restored and death Redemption song Weeping will not last a night Nor will sadness be for long Joy was born of sacrifice Oh, beautiful redemption song. Hallelujah, love is come. Hallelujah, God with us. Hope restored and death undone. Oh, beautiful redemption song. Beautiful redemption song. stone sinners saved and captives free oh beautiful 
redemption song. Hallelujah, love is come. Hallelujah, God with us. Hope restored unto thunder. Oh, beautiful redemption song. Hallelujah, love is come. Oh, hallelujah, God with us. Hope restored unto thunder. Oh, beautiful redemption song. Beautiful redemption song. Oh, beautiful redemption song. Thanks so much for joining us again this morning. We really hope you enjoy the service as we've celebrated Easter together. And let's go on celebrating with family and friends, safely of course, for the rest of the weekend. Um, we're gonna say the benediction in a moment and then please feel free to stay on after that for one of our breakout groups. Everyone's welcome to join one of those. Um, before we say the benediction though, we've just got a few announcements. Firstly, wanted to um, let you know we're gonna start a brand new series next Sunday. Um, it's called Bottled Up and it's all about um, handling our emotions in a healthy way, even when we're under pressure, under stress, which I think is true for all of us uh, during the pandemic and for all kinds of other reasons too. So join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. here on Zoom. We're also collecting uh, food again for Greencastle Elementary School. You can go to our website and sign up to buy certain produce and then uh, deliver that to the church tomorrow or Tuesday and then we'll deliver it um, to the school on Wednesday. We're also beginning the process of carefully and safely, cautiously um, opening up to in-person gatherings. At the moment, we're restricting that to um, outdoor gatherings of limited numbers um, with all the safety precautions in, in place. Um, and we're just asking everyone to fill out a survey to help us in that planning process as we move forward. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are, what your concerns are, um, and any suggestions that you have. So um, go to our website, um, click on the link for the survey and fill it out. Today is the last opportunity to do that. Um, looking ahead, we've got a couple of outdoor, safe, in-person events that I'd like to let you know about. The first one is on Wednesday, April the 14th. We'll be holding another one of our outdoor 
um, contemplative prayer practice nights. Um, so that will be from 7 to 8 p.m. Again, we'll be outdoors, um, socially distanced with masks, um, and, and uh, everyone is welcome to attend that. We're just asking you to sign up if you'd like to come, and you can do that on our website, and that way we can keep a handle on numbers. And then um, on Friday, April the 23rd, that's the day after Earth Day, so we're going to have our, our Earth Day celebration that day. We'll be uh, joining the, in the evening to, to plant new crops on our farm, and then we'll have a family-friendly, um, environmentally-themed movie, which will project onto the side of the barn, so we'll all be outdoors, and again, with all the safety measures in place, to enjoy that movie. So um, again, you can sign up for that online. Just go to our website. Um, we're asking everybody to do that so we can keep a track of numbers. Thank you again for joining us. Let's um, uh, celebrate finally by saying this benediction together. May the joy and power of the resurrection and the hope of Easter fill our hearts and minds this whole year. Come Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs>